In our recent lessons, we've been talking about Lewis structures, ways to represent molecules on paper that tell us all about what the valence electrons in those molecules are doing. So far, we've drawn molecules that always follow what we call the octet rule, which remember tells us that each atom wants eight electrons. In this lesson, we'll start to look at some exceptions to that rule. It turns out there are some elements which prefer different numbers of electrons, and that will change slightly how we draw our Lewis structures. Let's take a look. First, the exceptions. One type of exception is when we have less than an octet. And we've already seen some of that. Hydrogen is the most important example where we want less than an octet. By the way, there are reasons for why all of these different atoms want the number of electrons they want. We're not gonna go over that in the video. It would get too long, but there are reasons here. We're just going to give them the number they each want and then you're gonna to need to memorize that for the moment though. Okay, so some elements have less than an octet. Hydrogen wants two, we already know that. Boron turns out to want six, so here's boron. And this is how you almost always see boron with three things around it. Three hydrogens or three of the halogens over there in group seven. So notice it has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, and it's happy. That's what boron prefers. Beryllium wants, six, wants four. So here's beryllium, and this is almost how, always how you'll see beryllium. One, two, three, four electrons around it. So some elements want less than an octet. Those are the three important examples. Boron wants six, beryllium wants four, and hydrogen wants two. Okay. The exceptions to the octet rule also can go bigger than an octet. So we've gone over the first type where elements can have less than an octet. The other case is where elements have more than an octet, and then they can have eight, 10, or 12. This happens for elements on row 3 of the periodic table and below. And you decide if they want 8, 10, or 12 just by drawing the structure and seeing how many you need to add. Okay? A couple important notes on this. When you break the octet rule, it's going to be broken on the central atom. So in other words, the central atom is the one that's going to take on the extra electrons. Notice, for example, here we have phosphorus, and it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that phosphorus, that central atom, is breaking the octet rule. It has 10 electrons. That's the correct structure. Chlorine actually can break the octet rule too, but it's the terminal atom. We're not going to break the octet rule there. You're going to break it on the central atom. Okay, sulfur over here has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there we break the octet rule again, 12 total electrons on that central atom. Okay, let's work some examples. Okay, our first example is ZeBr2. And we're going to follow the same basic steps we did before. Step one, count the valence electrons. And xenon is right here. Notice xenon is below row three. So on the previous, uh, in the previous discussion, when we said that it had to be row three or below, what that means on the periodic table is it has to be below this row. So row three, four, five, or below, those can actually break the octet rule. Warning, right, as you start to draw this, you see, oh, xenon's below the third row. It might break the octet rule. Okay, let's count the valence electrons. Xenon has one, two, and then we skip the D block. Those don't contribute to the valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So xenon gives us eight electrons, and there's just one of them. So that's eight total. Bromine, on the other hand, over here... We go one, two, skip the D block, three, four, five, six, seven. And we multiply that by the number of bromines, of which there are two. That gives us 14. And we add them up, and we get 22 electrons. Okay, so 22 valence electrons we need to distribute around ZeBr2. Step two, draw the skeletal structure. Now, whenever you see a noble gas, it's going to go in the center. So everything over on this column, if it's in a molecule, is going to be central. So those are going to be central. So that's a little bit different than the leftmost rule. Another thing that's nice to remember, if I ever have ZeF6, right? If there's a bunch of one of my atom, those are going to be my terminal atoms. So there's two bromines. Those are going to be terminal. So a couple different ways there to see what's terminal. So let's put Ze in the center. 
and then we're going to tack on BR and BR. Okay, we've done step three, or step two, let's go to step three. We need to distribute the rest of our electrons. So, we distribute electrons, and we're going to just basically follow the octet rule as we do. Right now we have four electrons, right? So one, two, three, four. So four total electrons. Again, we never add bonds to right away. We always go with adding lone pairs at this point. So four electrons, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I stop on that bromine because it has an octet. It has the one bond and the three lone pairs. So that means I move on to the other bromine. I'm at 10 electrons, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And now I might pause there because xenon has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It has 8 valence electrons. But luckily it can take on more. And so we're going to break the octet rule just by adding more electrons to it. And we always break the octet rule, remember, on that central atom. So we will just go ahead and give it two lone pairs. Now we've used all 22 electrons. Okay, we've run out. Let's check our octets. Bromine, we know, has an octet. Three lone pairs is six, plus one bonding pair is eight. Same with the bromine on the other side. And xenon in the middle, we know, has ten electrons, and that's okay. So notice, I didn't put 12 electrons on there because I didn't need to. If I had 24 electrons to distribute, I could just put another lone pair on xenon, and that would be fine. So this is how we decide if we're going to have 8, 10, or 12 electrons. We decide based on what's needed as we write the structure. If I need to put two more electrons on the molecule, then they would go on xenon. But if I don't, then I'm just going to stick with 10. All right, let's do another example. This one's BF3. So B is right here. Let's count the valence electrons. That's three. There's one of them. Fluorine is right here. That has seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's three of them, so that gives me 21. When I add those up, I get 24 electrons. Now I'm going to draw the leftmost atom central, and that's boron. So boron's going to go central. I've done step one. I'm on step two. And I'm going to tack on my three fluorines. Okay. Now I'm going to distribute the remaining electrons. So I have six distributed in those three bonds. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I move on at that point because fluorine has eight. So twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And I've used all my electrons. Okay, now let's count for octets. Fluorine has one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight total electrons. Fluorine's happy. And all those fluorines are the same, so we can know all those fluorines are happy. Boron has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it only has six. It doesn't have an octet. So if boron was a normal atom, this would be where we would go ahead and add bonds. We'd add a double bond from fluorine. But boron's actually happy without an octet. How many does it want? If you remember from our discussion earlier, it went six. So that's actually happy. So this is the correct molecule. Okay, last example, SeCl6. So first, count valence electrons. Selenium is over here. It's going to have one, two, skip the D block, three, four, five, six. So six times one gives me six. And now chlorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Times six, because there's six chlorines. 7 times 6 is 42, which means when we add those up, we have 48 total valence electrons. That's a lot. Now, which one's central? Well, selenium is more to the left than chlorine. That's one way we could tell. Another way you can tell is there's 6 chlorines, a ton of chlorines on one selenium. So that means selenium is going to be central. So we've done step 1, and now we're going to draw our skeletal structure. Now, it feels weird, or at least it might, to add so many chlorines, but that's what we do. Because there's 6 chlorines, we add them. And why is that okay? Well, where's selenium? Selenium is here. It's below row 3. So anything below row 3, silicon, germanium, iodine, calcium, those can all break the octet rule. And so it's okay to have 6 bonds on it. All right, now those 6 bonds give me 12 total electrons. And so now I'm going to distribute lone pairs. I'm at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Woo! That was a lot of lone pairs. Okay, we've distributed them. Excellent. Let's check for octets. Well, chlorine has three lone pairs and a bond. It's happy. It's got an octet. And all those chlorines are the same, so they're good. Selenium has six single bonds going to it. It means 12 electrons. But that's okay because it can have an expanded octet. So again, you can see how the fact that it gave us six chlorines is what drove us to give it 12 total electrons. So as we draw the structure, that determines uh, how many electrons we should add to those row three or below elements. Meanwhile, boron or beryllium have less than an octet, and we know exactly how many they should have. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on the Expanded Octet. Hey, hey.